All right, so I have it on super good authority that if I take this back cover off of my Xiaomi Pro 2 electric scooter, reinforce the controller, that I can set the maximum in the custom firmware to 35 amps, and that would roughly pass about a thousand watts through the controller into the 350 watt motor. So uh, that will definitely not be sustainable long term uphill. But um, yeah, I mean, it should be doable. People have done it. So stock everything, just reinforce the controller. Apparently what happens if you do not do this is the tracks simply burn up. So the MOSFETs can handle it, the motor can handle it. Uh, again, in bursts, but uh, although this is a very hilly city where, where I live, uh, should be fine, I don't know. I mean, worst case, I'm going to change the controller, but anyway, I'll uh, leave it down in the comments or in the description. If, if shit goes bad, just note the date of upload, and uh, if nothing happened, it means I have ridden it for that amount of time without any problem. Let's get to removing the bag. Right, so in order to remove the three phase windings, you will need to gently press this little hook here. And then this will free the, free the connectors. So let's put this uh, rubber condom back on. Okay, same thing here. Let's try and do it through the condom, okay. And again over here. All right. So now that everything is disconnected, we can remove the wires from the outer casing. And um, so all the connectors are different layouts, are different pins, so that's gonna be fine. Uh, let's just remove the ESC from here and uh, go from there. All right, so this is the controller and it has some uh, thermal paste here. I'll uh, definitely be beefing that up. Uh, water detection, all right, yeah, no, this is not gonna be an issue. And yeah, let's just take this over to the bench and continue there. All right, so we're at the bench. Let's uh, take the lid off of this. Why oh, this is tight. Damn. Man, this feels nice. This is just some uh, electrical isolation. Let's see if we can gently peel this off. And so even though I've ridden this with uh, 30 amps as a setting, it seems the board hasn't gotten a lot hotter actually hasn't, uh, yeah, hasn't discolored at all as far as I can see. Let me shine more light onto it. Uh, doesn't look too bad. They have reinforced it though. So this track does have, right, and I haven't touched this. So it already has some reinforcing. What, uh, what can I do about all of this? Uh, hmm. So maybe, yeah, but this is conformally coated. I don't know, wouldn't fuck with that. Uh, 
was thinking of maybe uh, reflooding this side just to make sure I don't know yeah I, I'm already here so might as well um, board seems slightly bent though well, that is a bit weird anyway so I'll uh, reflow another All right, so that's one track done. Uh, one little quick tip, perhaps run some, uh, some tape over the fits. A lot of um, flux seems to fly off when you, when you do this, right? When you dump such insane amounts of uh, rosin core solder. So, uh, I don't know. It's not super even, but uh, it is quite beefy. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And uh, let's do the same over here. So again, right, uh, there is this conformal coating which has to be melted away. Quite a pain in the ass. I'm setting my uh, iron to, uh, what is it set to? Like boost is 400. So quite hot, but um, that's uh, what seems to be needed. All right, so the end result is by no means a work of art, but uh, it should do the job. So the main goal was to thicken the tracks as much and as uniformly as possible. You can see there are some lumps, but uh, we have raised the thickness quite a bit. And it's been a pain in the ass to work with this uh, conformal coating. I've tried to clean everything as, as best as possible, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not super chill. So just make sure all all of the pins are not shorted, which in this case they should not be. And then that should be it. If your board does not have those, uh, those bars, you could just add some copper, but uh, in my case they did have the bars and I don't know. I'm uh, worrying 
about the clearance on this side should be fine but anyway these will go like this and so yeah should be fine all right so now i'll just add some thermal compound on this side splash some on here as well and uh we'll put it back together and uh take it for a spin All right, so what I'm gonna end up uh, using is this uh, thermal silicone I got off of something, thermal, whatever you wanna call it, thermal pad. And these are quite thick, but I will squeeze them down pretty hard. Uh, this side also had some, uh, some surface area. I don't know, I think it's best to just concentrate on this side since this is where most the heat will come. Um, and yeah, I have ordered some proper uh, thermal pads, 10 by 10, so I'll cut out some, some nicer ones then, but for now, this should do. And so with this done, now let's uh, go back to the scooter and uh, put everything back together. All right, so three screws that we're securing in the ESC. Uh, there is still some thermal compound in there. Uh, will I do anything with it? I don't think so. It's uh, kind of dried out, kind of flaky. I don't know. I'll just leave it be. Nah, I think I'll clean it. Looks like shit. motor seems to be working fine nothing seems to have exploded and I think I think we could put it back together let me check check the phases are being real tight which at this point in time they seem to be And yeah, just put the cover back on and uh, that will be it for the hardware side. And we'll um, get on over to the computer and cook up a more aggressive custom firmware. All right, so to build your custom firmware, you can go to scooterhacking.org. And over here, you're going to select uh, the model scooter you have. Uh, so in my case, it's the Pro 2. Right, it's going to give us a warning saying that uh, you're not supposed to go too fast, but uh, we're going to disregard the constabulary. And over here, uh, we'll just take all of these in order. Uh, so I'll disable version spoofing, and what this allows us to do is use the official Xiaomi Mi Home app to update to the last firmware, which is I think 239 or 229 or I don't know, like I think it's 239 at the moment. And so what this will do is it will provide us another mechanism to restore to a stock firmware in case anything goes wrong, right? Uh, this will maximize the number and the Xiaomi app will not ask you to update every time you open it, but um, you could just not open it. And especially if you're on Android, you should use the M365 Tools app, which uh, doesn't care about the version. Anyway, 
uh, to just disable version spoofing, power and speed, and again, this applies to uh, a reinforced controller. Uh, so without a reinforced controller, I'd go as high as 28. Uh, but since we have reinforced it, uh, I'll go 37. I have ridden uh, 35 for about two months uphill with two people, so 150 kilos uphill, super steep incline, uh, so full power for like 15 minutes, no problem. Mm, I don't know, again, your mileage may vary, do this at your own risk, but um, pulling a thousand watts from the pack should still be within its nominal rating. Should be kind of a hundred percent of its nominal rating, or like a hundred five percent. All right, uh, drive I'm going to set to 25 amps, and uh, eco I have yet to understand it. You can't use it, I have no idea what it's for, but um, I'll just set it to 25 as well. Uh, the maximum limits I'll uh, leave as they are. All right, so if you want to actually use uh, these speed limits and uh, perhaps have a lower speed limit in drive, uh, you will not use direct power control uh, because that completely bypasses the entire mechanism um, but uh, in my case right I'll just maximize these because they will not be used anyway and I will be using direct power control we'll be leaving it to always on and curve type quadratic and this will give us a fine control at uh, low, ex low pedal presses kind of so at low speeds low levels of power it'll be very fine and once you floor it, it'll um, it'll give full power uh, a lot quicker. Current raising coefficient, have no idea what this is measuring. I think it's milliamps per half second or I don't know. So I go with 900, which is uh, very aggressive, uh, good for burnouts. And of course, zero kilometers per hour minimum speed before torque. You definitely have to do This is 90% of why we're here. Uh, the five kilometers is, is completely unacceptable, is super annoying, most annoying thing on the planet. Okay. Um, what we'll be using here, all right, so over on the braking and recovery section, uh, what I also like to play with is reducing this, and I'll go for uh, 70, or maybe 75, uh, probably 70. So what this does is basically let's say 20 will give a lot more e-brake than rear brake kind of this is how sensitive the e-brake is as as opposed to um, in regards to the uh, brake lever uh, depression I don't know um, so basically if you if you leave it at, I, I had it at, at 65 and you would very quickly, so the rear brake, the mechanical brake, would basically not engage and you would have full e-brake. So if you just want to use the e-brake a lot more, you could do this. Um, I find that 115 is very unnoticeable, right? So it's very smooth. So both of them brake quite evenly, which is very nice. I do want to use the e-brake a lot more, right? Because it does put power back into the battery and it doesn't wear out any physical components. So I had it at 80 just now, and I would want it to bite even sooner. Uh, that is because my uh, rear brake is very tight, so it doesn't require a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, lever movement until it actually starts biting, right? So I'm gonna leave it at 75, uh, you could leave it at 80, 90, and this will basically ensure that e-brake will precede actual physical braking. Uh, you got it. So minimum phase current, um, I haven't yet figured out exactly if I notice this, uh, right? If, if to, but, but I do want it to work until very low levels of power because, you know, why not? Well, you do have to change, so for other scooters, this has a lower value by default, but for the Pro 2, uh, and also the Essential and what, what have you, which will use the same builder, you will definitely have to lower this. So in my case, I'll just put it to uh, the amount of amps I have on uh, power, 
so I never want more than 37 amps to flow through the controller. All right. Um, you could also disable curse completely, but uh, I do like it. I do like it, uh, especially when I um, ride one-handed. So I want the scooter to stop on its own. Uh, however, what I do also massively enjoy is setting this current raising coefficient, uh, this curse current raising coefficient, super low. So 100 will mean that once you let go of the pedal, you'll stop accelerating and it will very slowly start the ramp um, up to whatever curves level you have it set to. So I recommend using this and curves low and it'll be smooth as fucking butter. Absolutely epic. I also like to stop my brake light from strobing because I think it looks super cheap. Also no brake light flash on curves. All right, uh, so 75, 37 to 100, yeah, this looks fine. Cruise control, I don't use cruise control. I recommend you not use cruise control. It will kill you. I have fallen twice, and it was 100% because of cruise control. And uh, this should also be left as is. And I'll be using down G to flash. It's um, quite reliable. It's a tiny bit more reliable than scooter hacking, but scooter hacking also works very nicely. Uh, use whatever one you happen to like more. And uh, that's been it.